What would the world look like if people felt like they mattered? Welcome to the Lead with Love podcast, exploring what it means to lead with love in business and life. I'm your host, Jada Selner, and in this show, I'll share meaningful conversations to help you, the creative, the entrepreneur, the world changer, reach more people, go after your dreams, and serve your community with love. I appreciate you joining me. Now let's get cozy and start today's episode. In today's episode, I talk with my dear friend, Sarah Jenks, about transitions and what it looks like when we give ourselves permission to fall apart. We also talk about rebuilding businesses from a place of magic and nature and owning the true expression of who we are. And we talk about how to get back into the flow after being overwhelmed. So you don't want to miss this part. It's such a great reminder for all of us. Now, I met Sarah when she was leading her international program, Live More, Way Less, which has been celebrated in publications such as Forbes, Parenting Magazine, and Martha Stewart Living. And now Sarah shares real unfiltered stories about the messiness and magic of life in her weekly letter that reaches close to 100,000 women. And if you're on Instagram, you must follow her stories. She always keeps it real and makes me laugh out loud in the best way. Now, in our conversation, Sarah gets really honest about how she felt like she lost her freedom and sparkle in her life after having her first child. And now she's taking a stand for women to pull forward their most alive, confident, soulful self so that we can end the pattern of taking scraps after everyone in our lives has feasted. So let's get cozy in this episode. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Jada. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to just have a conversation with you where people can feel like a fly on the wall because we've had many, many conversations about business, about family, (laughs) about relationships and marriage and all of that good stuff. So I am just mm-hmm. excited that people get to kind of witness what we talk about 24 seven via text or in a hot tub or wherever. <laughs> oh, me too. So I'd love to just let our listeners know a little bit of, you know, how we got connected together. I remember I was in B school, Marie Forleo's B school. I feel like that was the the connection, the web. And it was 2013. And I remember you posting inside the Facebook group. You shared like, hey guys, you know, I've worked with Marie. I'm doing this launch. And if you want to see how it's done, follow me. And I was like, ears perked. I was like, I want to see the behind the scenes. So I opted in. It was, you know, live more way less. One of your first programs that you put out into the world. And I became an affiliate, a promotional partner for your program. And I just think it's just so cool how that whole connection happened of me just wanting to like be a fly on the wall of your behind the scenes of your launch and how you were doing it and how you were serving and showing up for your people. And then I got to meet you face to face for your launch party in San Francisco, which was the best. (laughs) Well, you ended up being my top affiliate, like for every single launch. Yeah. After that. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, great. Which is amazing. And I think, you know, what worked for, me sharing was I actually believe in what you do. And I think that's a real big part. And because you actually love the people you serve. And so the first question that I'd love to just start with is what does leading with love mean to you? And how do you put love into practice in your business? Mm, So good. So I guess there are sort of two ways that I try to do that. I mean, first of all, when I started, I created Live More Way Less, which is a program for women who really struggle with emotional eating and really hating their body. But 
aren't successful on a diet and to really help them understand that they're overeating because they're so miserable and their life really sucks. Mm-hmm. And I created that program because it's what I wish I had when I was going through my struggle, you know, so in a lot of ways I created it for me. And so every single woman who came into the program, I just felt such a deep soul connection to because we were going through the same struggle and I could just feel, I knew how painful it was firsthand. Mm. And, and for me to see these women really connect with how important the day to day is in their life and to start to really create a life that they love before they lose weight and use Mm. that as a way to really be healthy and take better care of their bodies. I was just so excited because I felt like it was happening to me. I mean, and it was like, we were all doing it together. And so Mm. I just, I feel this instant connection with all the people I work with. And something that I hear a lot is I feel like you're in my head. I'm like, well, our heads are kind of the same. So, (laughs) you know, I get it. And, you know, now since I've felt like I've completed my own emotional eating journey, I realized that I needed to, you know, step into sort of a, a sort of different angle of the work Mm. and then after becoming a mother you know I went through this whole other process where I just completely lost myself and I'm now you know coming out of this time where I had no idea who I was I was completely marginalizing my own well-being and my own desires to everybody else and all these belief systems about what it meant to be a mom I mean you were so present to all of this and Mm. I, mean, I think like every time we got together, I was like, should I just quit my job and be a stay-at-home mom? And you're like, sure, no, that's like not who you are. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> He's like, oh, yes. <laughs> and I just wanted, you know, it was so painful. And now that I feel like I have such a clear connection with my soul and who I truly am, you know, I'm creating work around that. And I'm just so passionate about it because I remember, because it wasn't that long ago, how confused and miserable I was by being so disconnected from who I was. So I think that's the first part. Those are two examples about just really coming from a place of my own pain and my own Mm -hmm. learning. And then the second thing is for me is really tuning into the magic of my work and not always coming at it from a place of, strategy and numbers and, you know, all of the tools and the marketing tricks that I'm so well studied in, yeah. but really from a place of using the moon and manifesting and tuning into the earth and my inner compass and all of those sort of things you can't really wrap your logical mind around and those have really been the things that have shaped my business the most. Mm. So when you talk about that, the moon and the magic and manifesting and also being in the world of, you know, the studies of online marketing, what are some of the stories that are going on? Like the two parts of yourself, the like strategic, like know how to get stuff done, Sarah. (laughs) And the one that's like soulful, like mama grounded in the earth. Like what conversations are they having with each other? That's like the best question because they, I'm still, they still fight. (laughs) I haven't, you know, it's like, we don't have a leader yet. (laughs) I'm really working on my, I call her my inner priestess. Like I'm really working on my inner priestess taking the lead. And I just completed a three day retreat last week that really helped me know her better and sink into her and have her lead. But, you know, the conversations that they were at least having, you know, a week ago before I went on this retreat was, you know, my inner marketing person was like, look, this is really serious. We have a really big launch coming up and we don't have time to sit at the altar and meditate. Okay. We have to write all these emails 
And we have to make sure that the call to action is in size 18 font. <laughs> and, you know, we like, there needs to be three emails before the workshop goes live. And no, 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 like we are very busy and we do not have time for all this other stuff. And, you know, she really was fully developed. She got really fully developed when I was financially supporting my family, which I was doing while my husband was in a surgical residency, which he just completed last July. So I so honor her because she got us all through a really tough time. And she's sort of like a military drill sergeant. Mm. And she's a really good one. Like we won a lot of business wars together, (laughs) you know, but like business battles. And I just had a place now where I don't need to hustle as hard because Jonathan and I are now sharing our financial you know, the financial cost of our lives. And I just got so tired from my business feeling like it was a battlefield, you know? So I really tried to bring in my priestess side and I am trained as a priestess in the 13 moon mystery school lineage. And I've been doing that for over five years now, Mm. but it just ended up being, I kept her separate. You know, I didn't, I didn't bring her into the marketing. I totally brought her into my teaching. Like once the program started, I'm all priestess all the time, Mm. but it was in the building of the business that she would get sidelined. So now she's coming in and she's reminding, you know, I say everyone, because I feel like I have many different parts, you know, that come to the table. She's really reminding everyone this isn't a business. This is a temple. Mm. This is like a body of spiritual work that we're putting out into the world. This isn't a business. We're focalizing and amplifying an energy in a temple and, you know, or like a church of, you know, of a container for women to come to feel safe enough to touch into those deep parts that they have pushed aside for ever, mm. you know, out of, our culture, you know, I think just like, you know, my philosophy comes from a place of just the way our culture and society is set up. But if I'm wanting to create that safe space for women to land, the military drill sergeant can't be in charge of the invitation anymore. Mm. One, you know, I, you know I, what I mean? Yeah. And I love that you shared that it's an invitation, right? Instead of a marketing yeah. call to action. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And like, sure, like she sneaks in there from time to time. And I just like, even today, like she wanted to come out in a really big way. And I just needed to tell her like, Hey, like, we love you. You have been so helpful. And I really want you to take a nap. (laughs) You go take a nap. (laughs) And, you know, we're going to tend to the temple today. Yeah. And in the best way we know how. And the inner priestess voice. So what is she saying now that, and you're building a new body of work right now and you're allowing her to take lead in in this. What is she saying as you're building? And, you know, is there anything where she's saying like, don't do this, Sarah, do that. I'm so curious what inner priestess Sarah is saying. Yeah. You know, she just, she comes from a place of, you know, where are we being moved today? And what are we being pointed to focus on? I was just walking outside and she, so I was feeling my military sergeant was up and she says, oh, Sarah, just go walk outside mm. for a little bit. And so I just, I walked out my kitchen door and I walked around my yard and I looked at the lake and, you know, she just said, you know, I think it's time to write the welcome letter for your mm. new program. And I just really, I just felt the anticipation of a woman coming into the program and how, you know, confused she is and how badly she wants answers and how, you know, when you first start a program, it's that scrambling of like, I hope this helps. (laughs) You know, I, I feel so confused and so lost. I just hope this helps. And I just connected with her, who is me and just wrote from that place 
and it took five minutes mm. and it felt so much better than, you know, going into a sauna and being like, okay, this is the task that's due today. Let me check this off my Asana list. And <laughs> you know what I mean? And it just, totally. well, it would have taken me half an hour and not felt good. And then it wouldn't have felt good to them. So she's really just like, she doesn't even say much. She's just like, go for a walk, you know, tune into what's needed and enjoy it. Like have fun, have it be pleasurable, have it be enjoyable. You know, a lot of us get into these businesses because we can't imagine doing anything more fun. Mm -hmm. And yet in the day to day, we're not that happy. At least that was my experience. Yeah. No, it's so true and real. And yeah. even just hearing that voice, that part of you, it's like so slow, so simple, and mm -hmm. so spacious. Like I can feel mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I love that you're honoring both parts and like, okay, inner marketing, Sarah, go night night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I know you personally and, and have, yeah. have witnessed the journey behind the scenes and this evolution of work, what you're building right now. One, I'd love to hear what you're creating next. Cause I feel like everyone is excited to hear that, but also what did it take to get to this place? You know, you've been studying the 13 moons work for five years, but you've just started coming out of the closet more recently. And so really just yeah. talking about that, you know, being able to have a part of you that you're not sharing with the world yet. And then how do you make that entryway into like fully expressed Sarah? Mm, thank you. Such a great question. So let me start with sort of how I got to where I'm at right now. And then I can share, you know, what I'm creating so when I had my son four years ago, my first child, I was so rocked. It was the most intense entry to motherhood. I felt so confused about who I was. You know, I had just like in my pregnancy with Marshall, I had experienced a lot of business success with Liz Marie Left. We had a ton of enrollments. I made a lot of money. I felt great about the program. I was super connected to it because it was really my, you know, my story. And after I had Marshall, I just got caught up in all of the like rules about motherhood. Mm. And I think there's this lie that women have been told that if we can just, you know, find a husband and buy a cute house and have a kid, then we'll be happy. And here I am with all three of those things. And I'm miserable, like so intensely miserable. And I just kept asking, what is wrong with me? Why am I so unhappy? I thought I was going to have this baby and all of a sudden never want to do anything but be a mom. Mm. And that I would dedicate my whole life to, you know, nurturing this child. And it was going to be this amazing spiritual experience. And I would all of a sudden become this like selfless, energetic, you know, <laughs> woman. And None of that happened. And I thought it was because something was wrong with me. And so I stayed in this place of hiding, of pushing. And I thought at the time that if I could just make enough money in a business that now I was feeling sort of disconnected from, that I could at least get enough like childcare support or enough clothes or a bigger house or, you know, whatever the things are that I was addicted to at the time to feel happier and nothing worked, of course. <laughs> and I came into this and I finally started to question, whoa, like me. And I started, well, really what I started with, I started talking to other women. Like, are you guys having fun? <laughs> and like, 
a lot of the women who, you know, like, like you and our friend Michelle who had like older kids that sort of been through that whole thing and were really, you guys were doing your thing. You guys were having a great time. And all the women I was talking to that was sort of in this model of, oh, I should just be happy with the house, the husband and the kid were not that happy. Mm. And I was like, this can't be true that motherhood is supposed to be miserable for people. It's just like, can't be true. And it also can't be true that women are just expected to turn off who they are in order to be a good mom. Like, that's what I felt like I was being told. I had to turn off me in order to turn on mom, Sarah. Mm. And I just got kind of angry. I'm like, this cannot be true. And at the same time, I just couldn't find who I was. It's not like I just like went to the spa and I remember who I was or when I retreat, I remembered who I was. So she was gone. And I went to therapy with Jonathan. I went to therapy with myself. I went to therapy with my son because we were having a lot of issues bonding because I was going through all these things. I went on like three or four retreats in a year by myself. You know, I continued to work really deeply with my spiritual teacher, Kalila, Kalila Dowdy and the 13 Moon Lineage. I just dove right in to finding myself. And as I did that, I realized, oh, I'm no longer the bright and shiny businesswoman. Or I'm also not a traditional stay-at-home mom. And then I realized, like, why was I trying to put myself in one of those two categories, everyone is so different. And so all I had to do was instead of trying to put myself in a box, really tune into what is the most self-expressed version of me. And I had to then just start being that person in my daily life, which was so hard because I was sort of changing who I was on the outside to really match who I was on the inside. And, you know, some people were triggered by that. Yeah. Not a lot of people, but some. And I was triggered by that, most importantly. You know, I was not comfortable. And I started wanting things that were really outside the box, like a retreat center, (laughs) you know. (laughs) And... That was really confronting for me, you know, and some people I was close to in my life because it was this like huge, ginormous dream. And this is like part of the story of magic. You know, basically I wrote out that I wanted to own a retreat center and and lead live workshops and circles in the woods and in fields. And I wanted to have, you know, a stream and I wanted to build this huge yurt and Two weeks after I wrote down, you know, this really clear vision, this property showed up online that checked every single box and more Mm -hmm. and right where we wanted to live in Massachusetts. So, and we ended up buying it and I live there now. So it was just wild. The whole thing was so wild how I went from being completely stuck in this lie and this box tuning into who I was and then really seeing the fullest expression of it, like right in front of me and where I'm living now. Mm. So it's been so beautiful that I'm realizing, and what's been so great is that my relationship with my kids is completely different and so much better. And I am a much better mother and I love spending time with them and I'm a, like, I'm a much better wife. Shanta and I have a great relationship. I'm closer with my whole family. I have deeper friendships. I mean, everything got better. It's so not true that women need to turn off who they are or marginalize our own well-being mm-hmm. to keep everybody happy. I have found that the opposite is true, that the only way that people around me were going to be happy was if I was completely self-expressed and taken care of. Mm, That's so beautiful, Sarah. 
And okay. it's amazing to witness that journey and seeing the videos being sent to us of the house and just all the <laughs> synchronicity that was happening for it. Such a big dream and vision to unfold for you. My curiosity is around, you're a natural community builder. You really show up vulnerable and messy and real and raw as you connect with your community online. And so I'm curious what that experience has been for you as you shift from, you know, live more, way less to really stepping into this space of magic and self-expression and owning your truth in the world. And if there were any challenges and surprises that happened along the way, making that transition. You know, the only challenge was when I sort of knew I needed to shift but wasn't doing it yet, which was when all of these voices came into my head of, you know, I'm going to lose my business. No one's going to want to fall anymore. No one's going to pay me to be messy. You know, I need to support my family. Like the whole military sergeant was coming in. So it was more in the anticipation and all of the inner mean girl to use our friend Amy Ehlers beautiful term, you know, they just came out raging, but I just, I really did it out of necessity because I was so exhausted from taking it all mm. the time. And it wasn't just, it wasn't just in my business. It was like taking it with my friends, taking it with my family, taking it with Jonathan, you know? And I think as women, we do that all the time because we just don't know any other way. We just think we're supposed, just supposed to be happy all the time and just say that we're fine. And I just came to a place where I was too tired to mm. not be real. And so once I started and I made the shift, I mean, everything just got so much easier because like, that's just how I am. Yeah. I am raw and messy and I am spiritual and a little weird and do some stuff that not everyone does on a random Tuesday night. But I just, like my work is so much easier now that I, all I have to do is share who I naturally am. So if there's really hasn't been a lot of challenges and like everyone's been psyched about it. Mm. I also am very blessed with the most amazing community around. I just, I don't know if I just like got lucky or what, but <laughs> like everyone's always like, oh my God, when you transition and you're doing something else, like I haven't experienced that at all. Everyone's just been so loving and wonderful and it's been so easy. It really mm. has been. Yeah. And I know this is, this probably comes very intuitively to you and, and you just showing up as you are, but if there's any ingredients that you could unpack on how you connect with and nurture such a beautiful community online like that, that would inspire the listeners who are tuning in of like, I want an amazing community that will just, you know, ride along with me through transitions and changing, you know, business identities to really fully own who you are. Just anything that you could share on some of the intentionality behind building the community and nurturing it for the long term. Yeah. So like when I post something on Instagram, which is my favorite place to connect, it's really a combination of like sharing something that's been going on for me. And it's usually not like right in the moment because, you know, Instagram is not like my first line of support. Like I'm not going to Instagram for support, you know, and I think that that's a really important thing. Like I'm going to Instagram to support others and to be of service. So like I come to you and our friends for support. And I think that's a really important thing for people to see. And so there's never any like, at least this is my intention, like there's no neediness in what I'm posting. And so I come at it from a place of sharing and then I translate what's been going on with me to then support the person who's reading it, whether it's like a strategy or just permission mm -hmm. to fall apart, I really try to translate. So it's not just all about me. It's really like I'm sharing this so that you can see this part in you and really 
go there, take a moment to go there. So I think that's the key. And usually I ask a question, you know, for them to either contemplate on their own or to share in the comments as well. I love that of the intention is to serve, share, and support them, not you right. being in that space of needing something from them, but you're actually there to show up and give. Sometimes I will ask for parenting advice, you know, because <laughs> I really do get like the best advice from my followers on Instagram. And I'll just say like, guys, we're not sleeping. Like one of the most commented posts I've had is when Marshall just wasn't sleeping for, I mean, it was years really, but I just finally <laughs> asked for support. And so there's things like that when I'm asking a question, but that's sort of different than this nuance, like give me attention because things are hard. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're crowdsourcing for mm -hmm. information and variety of feedback around those pieces, which is super helpful. And I think that's what social media is connecting people and leveraging people's knowledge and expertise yeah. to get that wealth of knowledge. So you mentioned permission to fall apart. And mm. You have been such a good model of that for me. And I would love for you to share, like, what does that look like? How does a woman who is ambitious and, you know, feels like they have to have it all together at all times, or people are going to think that they don't know enough, they're not doing enough. How do you fall apart? Like, what does that look and feel like? What would you tell someone if they were kind of zipped tight, trying to hold all the pieces together? Oh my gosh, it's so hard to do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you really have to go to this place. You have to risk total self judgment. Mm. You know, when I really let myself fall apart, I'm really mean to myself. And it's like you have to know that that's going to happen. And that can't mean that you're not allowed to fall apart. You know, we have to be present to that part of us inside of you that's just going to tell you how awful you are for not being able to keep it all together. Or that, you know, my voice always says, Sarah, this really isn't that hard. Mm. This is just normal stuff that everyone struggles with. And, you know, you're so lucky and you're so privileged and, you know, get over it. And so, you know, there are, of course, times when I've seen, like, some symptomatic causes of me falling apart that don't need to be there. But the reality is I wouldn't have seen that if I hadn't let myself just lose my shit. So what usually happens is I, this is just me, but I need to sort of tell everyone that I'm about to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll call my team. Like, I'll, I'll know what needs to happen because I'm starting to lose it. I'll call my team. And I'll say, okay, guys, like, I need to take a couple days or a week. And then I'll, like, text Jonathan and just be like, just FYI, I'm falling apart. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to be when you get home from work today. <laughs> Love it. Um, Morning. <laughs> and then I do. I, like, tell everyone first, like, while I'm still functioning. And then I will usually, you know, text you and our mastermind and a few other of my friends. And then I just go into the hole. And then what usually happens, I'm like, I'll be fine in a day. I just need a day. <laughs> and then I'm not fine after a day. And I need to take like a week, sometimes two, to really just like, it's really about resting. Yeah. And letting all the emotions come out that I wasn't letting come out before. And being in that, allowing the judgment to come. And that's really it. And then it sort of looks different every time. Mm -hmm. But I think the key is that I, I warn people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I tell my kids, too. You know, I tell my kids, even though they're little, I feel like they totally understand. I just say, I'm having a really hard time right now, and it has nothing to do with you, and you don't need to fix it. I love that and, so You know? Much. Yeah. And, you know, Dad is feeling great, and he's here for you. And I'm going to be here for you as much as I can, but I just need you to know that I've had a lot of hard stuff going on with work and I'm just not gonna, I can't pretend that I'm okay anymore, but it has nothing to do with you. And I love you. Mm, I love so, that so that much. also helps. Yeah. So a lot of 
you know, my clients that I work with, they're doing great. And then there's that sense of overwhelm, right? That the to-do list yeah. starts to get a lot longer. And what's kind of your recipe, your your menu to get back into flow and focus when you are in that state of overwhelm or, you know, you've allowed yourself to unravel and not be okay. And then how do you get back in it? How do you get back into that flow and that focus? Yeah. Well, I call on my friends a lot and I get like a sanity check, Mm. you know, like, is this a lot or am I like just, or is it an emotional thing? Like, do I need a mindset shift or do I need to take things off my plate? Mm. Or do I need to extend my timeline? That's sort of the first thing I identify and I always need help to identify that. And then if the issue is emotional, then I just try, I try to reconnect with my inner priestess and remember that I am holding a temple, I'm not running a business. And that seems to really help. It helps my body relax. It helps time to expand. It helps me to get really clear on what's important. And then usually from that place, I can see, okay, I may be overcomplicating something Mm. where the timeline is too tight or I'm taking on too much or I need to delegate a few of these tasks or maybe it just doesn't need to be perfect. And that's really where I've been coming back to so much recently is that, you know, when I roll out a new body of work, you know, and it's just not going to be perfect. I have so many ideas, but I'm probably only going to execute on about, you know, 30% of them Mm. these days. Yeah. Because I have a small team, which I've done deliberately. I have two kids, two young kids, and I'm pregnant. I just moved across the country. You know, my capacity is much lower than I give myself credit for. Mm. You know, like sometimes I still run a business like I'm a childless (laughs) 27-year-old. Yes. Right? And I'm just not. And, you know, in five years, that's probably going to be really different. Mm. But I'm just like one person. Well, right now I'm two. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I can't wait to meet the baby. (laughs) I know. I know. So cute. One thing that I'm noticing for you is that you really have a good friend support system. It's like the ones that I text or the ones that I get feedback for the sanity check. So I'm curious, you know, from a love perspective of what do you do to pour into your friendships to really nurture them, especially as you've moved from New York to San Francisco to Massachusetts, like there is magic in how you look at friendships. And I think it'd be really helpful for people to hear what it is that you bring. Mm. Oh, thank you. Well, something that has really helped me is I'm really clear on what different friendships and friend groups bring to me. Like I've known that I need other women in my life who are entrepreneurs because they're the only ones that are going to understand all the ups and downs. And it's also really nice that most of my entrepreneurial friends are mothers and spiritually oriented. Mm. And so that is so helpful for me. And so that's been one thing to sort of like look for some similarities. Like I also have some friends who are mothers and spiritually oriented. I have some friends who are entrepreneurs, but aren't mothers, you know, but we like first base week, we have these similarities that we can connect on, but it's not like everyone needs to check every single box. Yeah. The second thing is, is that I like creating groups of women because I am not always available, like to have a one-on-one relationship. Mm. You know, like I sort of need to have the freedom to 
like sort of like pop in and out and like friendship, our friendships need to be sort of like loose enough that I can kind of disappear for a couple of weeks if I need to, you know, it's like if I've had another baby or I'm launching something or, you know, it's like, who knows, there just needs to be a natural flow. And I find that when there's a group, like the energy of the container can continue. You know oh, what I mean? Yes. Does that make Very, sense? I love that. I am um, because I'm a part of those yeah, groups. Of our group. And it is so true. It's the same reason for me. You know, I, I have some private one-on-one clients, but I always incorporate group elements. And I'll say that my programs that have that group container where it's not just reliant on that one-to-one relationship between me and them, those ones thrive and have like high vibration energy because it's just that collective wisdom. And yes, some people can kind of take their foot off the pedal and things are still moving forward. So it's really cool to see. It's totally working. You've done amazing. (laughs) I love that. So a question that I have for you, Sarah, is what's your why right now? What's the vision that you are moving towards that you've been able to dream so big? And I know that this vision has evolved and expanded over time. So I'm curious what your vision is today. Mm. So something that I heard Glennon Doyle say recently was what breaks your heart And she says, you know, when you want to know what you're meant to do, you have to ask yourself what breaks your heart. And when I asked myself that question, what I realized is what really breaks my heart is seeing a woman who has no idea who she is or why she's here. Hmm. And it breaks my heart so much because I think it is so painful to go through life as like a robot. I know it sounds harsh, but to only be going through the actions of what you're supposed, like quote unquote, supposed to do, and then giving so much to other people and having nothing left for yourself. When I would have friends come to me who are, you know, in the early phases of motherhood, and they're just doing so much for their kids, they're bending over backwards for their husband. They're doing so much housework, so much laundry. And all they want to do is like, you know, they keep talking about starting a business, but it never happens. They keep talking about taking care of themselves, but it never happens. And when I ask them, like, why doesn't your husband do the laundry? I'm like, oh, I couldn't ask them to do that. Or it's like, why don't you have a babysitter come? It's like, oh, well, we can't afford to do that. And I'm just like, well, you know, when did it become okay for us to spend our entire existence making sure everyone is cared for, happy, fed, and growing Mm. and bending over backwards to make that happen? Well, no one's doing the same for us and we're not doing it for ourselves. It's just like mind blowing to me. And then I realized it's because we've been taught as women that it's a give and take, that if we give something to ourselves, then we're taking it away from our children. Or if we do something for us, we're taking it away from our partner. Everyone else is worse off if we are trying to make ourselves better. And I believe that we've been taught that to keep women in this place of low power, to have our power hidden from us, to be easily controlled so that the patriarchy can flourish. And I'm just so done with that belief system because I've seen it in my own lives and a lot of my friends' lives that, no, when we put ourselves on the list, like equal, not necessarily above, but equal with the other people that we love the most, then like everyone's flourishing and everybody wins. Mm. We don't need to have this place of like, if I'm taking care of myself, then everyone else is screwed. It's just so, it's just not true. So I'm creating a, I'm not like totally talking about it yet, but I'm creating a community that's a really low price point where I'm going to be doing monthly teachings. Well, it's actually not even monthly, it's moonly, which I'm Mm. so excited about. Everything's going to be done moonly. 
around how do we shift this belief system away from the either or to an and conversation. My kids are important and I am important. You know, my husband's business is important and my business is important. Not that there's always this like, this give and take or compromise. Yeah. Like I really, I really experienced in my relationship and with my family, like we don't do compromise. We come from this place of how does everybody win? And it's working. And I'm just so excited to create this huge community where we are creating a new environment and a new belief system so that women can come in and start to really believe in themselves more and take the time and the space to tune into who they are and then be that person in real life. We're using, you know, these tools that I have found so powerful in really understanding, you know, feminine spiritual practices. Because what I've seen is that in a lot of, you know, in our society is sort of a reflection of not having any feminine archetype. Mm. You know, without having any feminine spiritual practices, you know, our society is built on a 24 hour model where we're supposed to be the same every day, have the same energy, want to do the same thing, same productivity level. And that's because men have a 24 hour hormonal cycle and men are the same every day. Thank God. (laughs) So nice for me that Jonathan's the same every day. But women are in a 28-day hormonal cycle that really reflects the phases of the moon and the seasons of the sun and, and the earth as the, you know, as the sun and the earth turn. But we're not taught any of that. We're not taught to be connected to the energy of fall and winter and spring and summer and how the four phases of the moon also mimic that. And how our bodies are biologically reflecting that cycle in us. And I have found for me, now that I understand that I'm a cyclical being by really tuning into Mother Nature, to feminine spiritual practices, tuning into my soul, tuning into the magical web around me, that's the permission slip that we've been talking about. Like that's the permission to be different to fall apart and then have energy and then need to go in and be more intuitive. You know, there are times when I feel like, like a super fierce warrior. And there are times when I am a really, you know, sensual seductress woman. Mm. And I am all of those things. And I just think it's like, we haven't been taught that that's normal. I am so, and so I'm just excited. excited. To do that. I'm excited for you to lead the way. I couldn't envision a better teacher to make such a big shift in our society. Like, yes, yes, yes. thanks. And I just, I really want women to apply it to their daily lives and their work and motherhood and their friendships and going to the grocery store and all those things so that we can wake up every day and feel self-expressed. So the best way to I'm doing a workshop on this work called Lost in the Shuffle of Your Life, which I feel like is what so many women struggle with. You know, it's just like getting caught on a hamster wheel and not knowing how to get off. And it's really around how to bring your most alive, confident, full, full self to the table. And you can sign up for that at sarahjanks.com backslash free workshop. Mm. And so that's the best place to come and spend time with me and that's happening soon. Cool. I'll, I'll definitely post it in the show notes so that everyone can find that and just be in your world of the magic, the mess, motherhood, being just a beautiful leader, not just in business, but in life. And I'm so honored and thankful to call you friend. Like you, oh, you, you have just been such an inspiration for me and what female friendships can look like and having that mm. depth and that connection and that intimacy and, you know, 
just the other, was it last weekend? We were just having dinner together. We're like, Sarah is the glue. You're the glue. You just bring everybody together. And now you get to do it on a global level, bringing women together to really tune in and connect to their body's wisdom and be fully expressed. And I'm just so thankful to witness you on this journey and to share your magic with more people. So thanks, honey. That note, my final question is, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you'd love to share? Mm, That's a great question. I think the, the piece that's so important, you know, whether it's around really aligning our business with our truth or how we mother or how we are in our friendships or how we're spending our time is to realize that in order to really tune into that truth, we need to create a lot of space for ourselves. And I find that, again, we've been told this belief that our our worth is directly correlated to how busy we are and how full our lives are and how much we're doing for other people. And I just want to really encourage women to remember that part of who we are is, you know, again, this seasonal cyclical being is winter, this time of rest, of base of not having anything going on. And I've gotten the biggest hits been the most intuitive, had the most clarity when I've given myself, you know, really like four full days to just do nothing, whether I'm home or on vacation, it doesn't matter. Like when I know I need to make a big shift, I need to have that amount of time, if not more. And then I need to build in that time into my daily and weekly and monthly schedule so that I just have space. Mm. And I think that is just like the basics so important. And one of the reasons why I'm creating this new program is to really help women strategize around where that space is being taken and to create the container to have that space every moon cycle. So that would be my last piece, just Mm. to have some downtime. Yeah, space. So beautiful. I love you so, so much. And again, I love you, Jada. If you want to find Sarah, sarahjenks.com and check out her free workshop at sarahjenks.com forward slash free workshop. Love you to pieces. I will talk to you in our text messages. All right. Sounds good. Bye, Eddie. Thank you so much for your heart and attention in listening to Lead with Love. If this message, Leading with Love, and life and business, and remembering the humans and beating hearts behind the numbers and all of that good stuff, I would love for you to take the time to leave an honest review. It would mean the world to me and it also helps more people find out about the goodness and helping spreading more love in the world, which we really, really need. So I would really appreciate that and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.